Mildred, a woman whose eyebrows competed for postal code status, stood perplexed before the broken vending machine. Her lunch money, in the form of a suspiciously sticky $5 bill, was firmly lodged within, taunting her like a captive hamster. You eat my snacks, she boomed at the steel behemoth, and I get nothing but rusty silence. Come on, you chrome-plated bully, cough it up. A nearby businessman, adjusting his tie tighter for his third meeting of the day, paused with a raised eyebrow. Mildred, unfazed, continued her one-sided conversation. Fine, she huffed. I'll play your little game. I bet ten bucks I can outwit you, you metallic monstrosity. So here's my riddle. I wear a crown, but I'm no king. I have teeth, but I don't sing. I hold knowledge, but I have no brain. What am I? The businessman, drawn by the spectacle, tilted his head. The vending machine, of course, remained stoic. Mildred paced, chewing a fingernail, a nervous habit that rivaled her eyebrows for dominance. Think, you rusty oaf. I'm the queen of answers, and I don't lose to vending machines. The businessman, unable to resist, cleared his throat. Ahem, excuse me? The answer's a book. Mildred spun, eyes wide. You, you knew the riddle, he chuckled. I wouldn't call myself Sherlock, but it wasn't exactly the Sphinx's finest work. Mildred scowled. Fine, fine, smarty pants. Then, in a flash of inspiration, she snatched a nearby discarded receipt and scribbled furiously. All right, metal box, here's another one. I'm filled with keys, but open no doors. I speak all languages, but have no words. What am I? The businessman, intrigued, leaned closer. The vending machine. Well, it still didn't seem particularly impressed. Suddenly, a young girl, skipping past with a lollipop, in her hand, piped up, It's a piano! Mildred gaped, then burst into laughter. Touché, little philosopher! Touché! The businessman chuckled too, shaking his head at the absurd scene. In the end, a passerby managed to dislodge the $5 bill from the machine with a well-placed paper clip. Mildred, her dignity slightly tattered, but spirits intact, bought a bag of chips and shared them with the lollipop-wielding riddle champion. As for the vending machine? It remained silent, its secrets as locked as its doors, yet strangely, somehow, a touch less intimidating. After all, it had been outsmarted not by one, but by three humans, each in their own peculiar way. Maybe the machine held a riddle of its own. What, after all, was more powerful than a crown, a brain, even a $5 bill. Perhaps it was the simple magic of human connection, shared laughter, and the unexpected wisdom of a child. And that, my friend, is a riddle for a